Hi, my name is Dave Whiteley. I'm Technical Director of Invisage UK Limited, and I'd like to take this opportunity to run through a workflow that I've put together for you, um, working with, in, with Autodesk Inventor and Autodesk Fusion 360. It's a tooling design workflow. Um, the, the idea is that we're going to take a third party model and uh, bring this into Inventor. Uh, we're taking a model that would have been designed in Carline. So the first thing we need to do is reference this into Autodesk Inventor and realign it, realign it for the tooling purposes. We'll then use multi-body modeling to create the tooling assembly. And then we'll finally use Fusion 360 to CNC machine the support. If you're using Product Design Suite Ultimate, you get a free uh, usage of uh, Fusion 360, which has the CNC machining in it. So let's take a look at this. I'm starting with an assembly inside Inventor and I'm going to use uh, AnyCAD to uh, bring a Katia 5 model into my assembly. And I'm going to reference it. I'm not going to convert it. Uh, we can, we've got two options when we bring a model into Inventor. We can convert it, which will actually convert it to an Inventor model, or we can just reference it. Um, the idea of referencing it is it brings it into the assembly as a reference. Uh, however, if obviously the customer supplies another model and we replace the model, then the reference changes in Inventor. That's what we're going to do here. So we reference it into our assembly. We'll place it into the assembly. I'll leave it ungrounded for now because as you can see, it's, not, uh, it's nowhere near uh, close to the XYZ axis in my assembly because of course this was designed in car line. So the first thing we do is put a bit of geometry on here. Let's stick a work axis uh, down this boss here and a point um, that we can use as an origin. And then we'll constrain it. So we we'll constrain the origin point that I've just created on my model to the origin on my assembly. Um, we'll also align the top plane here with the XY plane of the assembly. And finally, just to rotate it around, we use an angle constraint and we'll take that edge uh, just there and we'll align it to the Y axis by let's just turn it around 180 degrees. And we've now got our part constrained in relationship to the assembly, whereby the Z axis is aligned correctly and it's going to enable us to uh, produce some tooling where Z plus Z is uh, vertical. Okay, so this is in an assembly at the moment. We've aligned the uh, reference to Katia 5 part into our assembly. We now need to save the assembly. And we'll then derive this into a part. We're going to drive it into a part because this part is what we're going to use to put, use for the multi-body modeling. So we go to manage, go to derive, bring the assembly in. Just derive it into a part. So everything's associative. So if the uh, Katia 5 model changes, that will update in the assembly. The reference will update and this derived part will update. But the reason why we've got a part here is that now I can start producing my uh, assembly as a multi-body model. So those of you who haven't seen multi-body modeling before, the idea is that we can model a pseudo assembly within our part file. We have the, uh, we, we, we can use uh, and uh, work with the, um, the dimensions in the part, all the faces can see each other. So it's a very quick way of working in, uh, by producing an assembly, but within the part file. So the first thing we're going to do is create our base plate. So let's just produce an offset sketch from the top here. And just draw a rectangle around this to produce our base plate. Just extrude it. But I'm going to extrude it instead of joining or cutting, which is what we normally do with the part, down here we've got an option to actually create a new solid body. Uh, we'll make this 20 mil thick and that will actually now you notice on the left hand side in the browser we've got one solid body which is the part that we've actually uh, derived if I now click on OK 
We've now got two solid bodies, whereby we've got the part and the base plate as two separate bodies, hence making a pseudo-assembly. Okay, let's just put some uh, holes in the corner of this base plate. So we'll sketch on the top, project the geometry, we'll offset, so I'm going to give it a dimension for now. Put some points on at the corners. Go to our hole command. That will pick the points up. We want counter board. Um, we'll go to, uh, this is a neat utility. This enables us to actually choose the fastener that's going to go into this hole. Uh, and using a particular fit, it, it, looked, it uses lookup tables to determine the sizes of the counter board hole. Okay, so there's our base plate. Now we need to do the um, support plate. So in this instance, uh, what I need to do first of all is work with the, um, the, our component here. Uh, I need to take some surfaces on the underside of this, extend them so that I can actually sketch something on my base plate and extrude it up to that surface. So if we turn off the visibility of the base plate for now, turn the component over, and because we're working in part, or in a part still, I can use things like Thicken Offset, I can use Copy Object. Uh, let's use Thicken Offset, and we'll take um, some surfaces here. And we'll offset these, but we'll offset these by zero millimeters. Okay, that looks like everything. Pull these holes in with a patch. Stitch this together. Let's select them from the browser as well. Okay. And we'll go to extend. I'm going to use stretch and we're going to extend the edges of our surface model. Uh, let's go 25 millimeters. Okay, so we've got enough meat now really to enable us to uh, sketch something on the underside and then extend or extrude to this surface, surface model. So let's turn on the visibility of the base plate. We'll sketch on the top. We'll project some of the geometry from the surface. We don't need everything, but just enough to give us an idea of the profile that we need. We'll turn off the visibility of the surface model for now. And then we can start piecing together some sort of Right, turn the visibility of the surface off. So we've now got our multi-body part. We've got um, three bodies in all. We've got the component from the supplier. We've got our support plate. We've got these um, base plate. Um, we could then drill some holes through here. Um, but just to save time, I'll uh, ignore those for now. And um, if I take the visibility off of the component, we could have also put pins in here instead. But uh, we'll, we'll work with this for the moment. So let's save the assembly, sorry, the multi-body part. Now I save it as what the assembly would be called. So let's call this uh, tool one assembly. The reason why I do that is that when we go to manage and make components and we actually select the parts that we're gonna put into our assembly, the name of the assembly takes on exactly the same name as the IPT file that I just saved. So this will be called tool one assembly.iam. 
and I'm only selecting the um, the bodies that I want into my t in my tool. Obviously, I don't want the customer's part. Uh, it's good practice to rename these as the name that you want to give the part file. I'm not going to do it in this instance, but if you go to next here, it will actually tell you or show you what the component name will be called. And as you can see, it takes on the name of the solid body. You can rename in here should you wish. Let's click on OK. Let's create our multi-body part. OK. Sorry, our multi-body part produced as an assembly. This then creates us uh, an assembly that contains our parts as separate components now and they are grounded because they were in the correct place in the first instance. So there's our multi-body part, they're all in the correct place. Um, the final uh, assembly, these are now separate components, they are grounded because they're in the correct position. This is where you then start adding fasteners and so on and so forth afterwards. This is our final assembly. So let's save this and open up our part here. That is the one I want to send through to Fusion to do the CNC machining of the surfacing at the top here. So we're moving to Fusion. The Fusion is, uh, the files are on the cloud, but the actual software runs on your computer. Uh, once the files are loaded on your machine, then you can run this and run Fusion for up to 14 days um, before it has to get back onto the cloud again. What we're going to do here is we're going to upload our part. So an inventor, we've got the part here, which is called Solid 3. So let's go back into Fusion. Let's select this file. And upload it. This uploads it to the cloud. And once it's uploaded to the cloud, we can then start working on Fusion. Now, Fusion is an exciting uh, piece of software that uh, contains um, part modeling, assembly modeling, 2D drawing creation. It contains CNC machining, three axis, simultaneous. Um, it also contains FEA analysis, so we can do single, uh, uh, single part stress analysis. It's also got thermal analysis in it. So a fantastic tool. And you've got it, if you've got um, if your own product design suite, Ultimate, You've actually got a license for Fusion 360. So once it's uploaded, we'll bring it into Fusion. We'll go to CAM. We'll set up our stock. I'll just use the default. And then we've got a number of uh, um, types of uh, CNC machining that we can do here. So you've got turning, you've got drilling, you've got 2D profiling, you've got 3D machining. Uh, let's take the 3D machining and let's do, uh, this is a superb tool, adaptive clearing. So what we'll do here is we'll select a tool. Uh, this is going to be aluminium. It's a 3D profile, I'll use a bull nose. Let's choose a 10 diameter cutter. Click on OK and just let it do a roughing operation. I won't bother about Z, uh, height, Z heights or anything like that for the moment. And we'll just do it. let it do some adaptive clearing. OK. And after that we'll do some uh, finished machining. So let's do some parallel machining. This time we use a bull nose cutter. Check the heights, yep, the direction. Uh, let's choose zero degrees, that's in the x direction. Step over uh, two mil. Okay, we could also do things like um, ignore these upstands here, these can be done using some form of spiral machining, um, but that will do there. Uh, let's have a look at, uh, let's just take this one and do some simulation on it. Let's show the stock. This is well the roughing, but uh, let's just uh, speed this up. So you've got simulation on here as well. Okay, let's close that. 
And then if we go to post processor and choose Post processor. Click on post and that will produce us our code for whatever machine we require. You get about 50 different post processors with uh, Fusion. They can be edited by us and edited by yourselves. Um, but that's the output from uh, Fusion 360. Um, so what we've done is we've uh, taken our third party model, we put it into an assembly, we then produce multi-body modeling, we've output that to a final assembly with all our parts, we've taken the support and put it into Fusion 360 for CMC machining, and that's the end of the demonstration. Uh, you can find us at these sites, and also contact us on the details on this page, and uh, thank you very much for watching.